Hi everyone! Thanks so much for tuning into the SH Weddings YouTube channel with me again today. I did want to talk a little bit today about the wedding day timeline. I know that this is something that brides will usually stress out about um, the months leading up to their wedding. And it's a little bit stressful just because it's about that time where all the details are starting to come together for the wedding day. All the little things that you've been worrying about for months and months and months beforehand um, are finally coming together and it's kind of difficult to kind of figure out um, the timing for everything in addition to where all the little details are going to go. So I thought I'd do a video about it today just because I know that a lot of people can't hire a wedding day coordinator or a planner. Um, I'm hoping that this is really helpful for a lot of you out there that do happen to come across this video and I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Usually the way that I like to start personally is to actually have a point of reference and then either work backwards or forwards from that. And personally I like to start with the ceremony start time and then work backwards from that to kind of get a feel for how the morning is going to go and then actually start with the ceremony and then move forwards to get an idea of how the rest of the evening is going to go. So usually I'll start with the ceremony start time. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about what's going to happen prior to that. And usually what happens are photos. So we have to think about first if you're going to be doing a first look or not and that means seeing each other before the ceremony and doing photos or if you're not. If you do do a first look, you'll also have to think about if you want your wedding party to be involved with that so the photographer knows to schedule enough time to kind of position the wedding party um, however you'd like. You'd obviously discuss that with your photographer ahead of time um, or if you want them to be a completely separate thing. So let's just say that we are going to do a first look and what we're probably going to start with is budgeting time for your first look and figuring out exactly how much time we'll need for all of the wedding party photos and your portraits. Usually for wedding party photos and couple portraits I like to budget about two hours and I usually like to consult with the photographer beforehand just to see what their preferences are as well um, depending on their shooting style and this is also going to be dependent on um, the couple themselves and where they want to go for photos if there's a lot of traveling involved etc. So I I think two hours is about standard, it's pretty average. Um so that kind of gives a combined time of an hour for the wedding party and then an hour for the couple portraits. Um, that usually works well for me, um, but again, like I said, please consult with your photographer beforehand to see what their preferences are because that's really the most important thing. So let's say we're going to budget two hours for photos. Working backwards from that, we're actually going to be doing the first look and I usually like to budget about 15 minutes or so for the entire first look. Um, I know that the first look is about like in reality like one or two minutes but I like to budget 15 minutes so that I can give the couple a little bit of breathing time just kind of like after they see each other for the first time take it all in um, you know kind of maybe get away from everyone for a few minutes and just kind of talk and um, like I said just really take the moment in because it's the only time that you guys are ever going to do that on your wedding day. And usually how I'll start to to um, plan that out is to bring the groom out about five minutes before um, the first look is to start. I usually get him positioned with the photographer um, and that way he's all set, his back is turned, wherever you guys decide to do your first look. And then I'll bring the bride out about one to two minutes before the first look is supposed to happen. That way everything kind of goes very smoothly and it's choreographed perfectly and then the photographer is a little bit more calm knowing that everything is set up for him or her. So that's how I like to schedule the first look and then immediately after that you'll go right into wedding party portraits and um, your couple portraits. Moving backwards from your first look, you'll want to go into what time you should all be dressed and ready to go and finalize all of your makeup touch-ups. And this is actually something that you'll have to consult with your makeup artist and hairstylist. All of those people are very different as far as how quickly they can do bridal hair and makeup and bridesmaids hair and makeup. Basically you'll just want to go to them and say this is how many people are getting hair done, this is how many people are getting makeup done, um, how long does it take per person, and then give them a time of when they have to be done by and that will determine when they're going to arrive. So that will also determine when all of your bridesmaids should arrive. So then you have your start time for the entire day set because you'll know exactly when your bridesmaids need to arrive. When you're all getting ready during that morning, it is also important to schedule some time to eat, especially if you're not having a ceremony until later in the afternoon. You'll probably have breakfast in the morning, but you can't not eat until your reception starts because you will feel lightheaded um, and you might get cranky. <laughs> I know that me personally, if I don't eat like every four hours, I get really cranky. So so just make sure that you schedule 
and think about ahead of time, you know, maybe bringing in sandwiches for everyone or having kind of a brunch thing where you're bringing in bagels and pastries. Um, my wedding coordinator told me that she's like, make sure that you have some sort of a protein, whether it be cheese or peanut butter or whatever. It really does hold you over until you're able to eat at the reception. So that is a really good tip. I, that's something that I always tell my clients because my wedding day coordinator told me that. So um, that is really important. Make sure to schedule time to eat. Now, as far as your groom and groomsmen, they have it so much easier. <laughs> they really, really have a relaxed day, especially if they're not planning any activities. I know that in um, my Introducing Josh video, he talked about doing all of your activities before the rehearsal dinner the day before, and it really just does work out that much better because on the morning of, they can just drink and relax, play video games, whatever boys do, and then... Just consult with your photographer what time they'll be going over to the um, the groom getting ready area to take pictures. And then I recommend just your guys getting ready, like putting on their, um, their tuxes and their shirts and things like that about 15 minutes prior. And then when the photographer comes, they can do pictures of the guys like finishing getting ready, like putting on their jackets, tying their ties, putting on their cufflinks. And then usually in my wedding um, timelines for my actual SH Weddings clients, I'll put an annotation in that, um, that section specifically for the groom saying, um, leave your ties untied, leave off your cufflinks, leave off your jackets, put those on when the photographer gets there. That way they have some getting ready pictures. So that is pretty much the morning leading up to the wedding ceremony. Once you guys finish with your couple portraits and your wedding party photos, you're going to want to get to your ceremony site. Um, between 15 and 30 minutes before your ceremony start time. And this is really dependent on one, if you're getting married in a church, um, the person that's going to be marrying you typically likes you to be there a little bit earlier. Um, I don't really know why because you guess you just pretty much end up sitting there and standing around and waiting and being anxious. So personally, my personal preference is to not get there about 15 minutes until the ceremony starts. But again, you really have to consult with your officiant because sometimes they like you to be there um, up to a half an hour beforehand, especially if it's um, a really high profile Catholic church or something like that. They have a lot of organization they like to do. So you have to consult with your officiant on that to see what their preferences are. But then you guys get married and that's the most exciting part of the day. So after you guys get married and your ceremony is over, you'll want to think about if you're having a receiving line. This isn't actually too common of an occurrence these days. I don't really have a lot of weddings that do receive lines um, just because I have a lot of couples that choose to do first look so they end up greeting everyone at cocktail hour however if you do want to do a receiving line I always 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 over budget time because they can easily go way way longer than they're supposed to especially if you have a larger guest list I have had weddings where they actually go a lot quicker than I um, would anticipate but there are a lot of weddings more so that go way over budget and you don't want to be late because of your receiving line. So I always budget about 20 minutes over what I think it's going to be. And that way, if we do finish beforehand, we have extra time and we're not as rushed for formal family photos at the altar with extended family and stuff like that. And then if we do happen to run late, we're still on time. So that is what I recommend for that. Usually after your receiving line, you'll want to go right into, like I said before, the extended family portraits. And these are really just, um, Pictures that you're doing more for your parents, your grandparents, so they have framed pictures to put on their mantle, on their wall, whatever. Um, and these very rarely take a lot of time, especially depending on your photographer. I think mine took 15 minutes. Um, but ask your photographer how long these things take and don't plan to do all of your photos at this time. Just get the really important ones and then the like the really super extended family, you can definitely do during the reception and just make a note for your photographer. So just say, these are the photos that I want right after this ceremony at the altar and then these are the ones I want during the reception. Um, trust me, you won't want to be doing a lot of photos right after your ceremony. You're going to really want to get to cocktail hour and start drinking and partying and all that stuff. So let's say that you did not do photos um, before your ceremony. You're going to have to do them during cocktail hour and I always suggest that you budget more time than necessary. Usually couples only budget like an hour and that always makes me really nervous because I really want you to spend as much time with your photographer as possible. I really want you to be able to be relaxed during your photos and not feel super rushed because when you are more relaxed the better your photos are going to be. So I mean if you can I would budget an hour and a half to two hours. I know that's not usually possible Possible, especially if you don't have a big planned gap in between your ceremony and cocktail hour. But if you can um, do it that way, maybe even extend your cocktail hour by a half an hour if possible. I know that a lot of couples do that these days as well, especially if you have a little bit of time at your venue. Um, that's definitely a recommendation. So that's usually why I recommend that you do your photos beforehand, just because you have a lot more time to get all the photos you want 
And honestly, when it comes down to it, after your wedding day, the photos are really all you have left over. So I'm just personally a really big advocate of taking a lot of time to do photos. And um, that's just my personal opinion. So I really have to stress that with my own clients. But like I said, it's also a personal preference thing with you as well. If you don't feel like you need all that time for photos, just schedule about an hour or so after the wedding ceremony and after family portraits to go ahead and do those wedding party portraits and then couple portraits. So, moving forward from that, we're going to think about the rest of the evening. I like to just move in chronological order for this. Now, as far as wedding party entrances, you'll need to designate someone to line you guys up about five minutes before your reception starts. And if you don't have a wedding coordinator, usually the DJ will take this task over. Um, I usually am the one that kind of goes to the DJ and says, okay, it's time to start lining up the wedding party. Um, but hopefully your DJ will know, and most of the time they do. They're pretty organized. Um, at about five minutes beforehand, you guys are going to want to start to line up outside where you're going to be coming in to be announced um, into the reception. And he usually will go over, I'm sorry, he or she, the DJ, will go over names, pronunciations, order, things like that just to ensure that it all goes very smoothly. And usually as a wedding coordinator, I like to be there and be double checking all this stuff as well just to kind of make his or her job a little bit easier. Um, so once you guys are announced, I like to budget about... 10 minutes for announcements because some can go over and some can be really quick. So it just depends. So I think 10 minutes is a really good average. And then usually after that, depending on your, your reception schedule, I do want to stress that all receptions are different. You do not have to follow a certain timeline. I would just recommend talking to your caterer or venue to see if they have any preferences as far as um, order of events. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Usually their biggest thing is when the cake is cut, just because they like to make sure that they have enough time to serve the cake. Like get it back into the kitchen, cut it all up, and serve it to the guests before like the fun and dancing starts. So I would just talk to your venue or caterer about that specifically, but usually they don't really have any other requirements as far as timing. So it really is up to you. And anything kind of goes these days with wedding ceremony, I'm sorry, wedding receptions. So I'm just going to kind of give you the average um, timeline for what I experience when I'm coordinating weddings. Usually right after the wedding party is introduced and the bride and groom are introduced, they'll go sit down. Either they'll go right into their first dance or cake cutting or they'll just go sit down at their table and we'll go right into toasts and speeches. Okay, so here's my biggest tip for um, the reception timing. Always, always, always over budget time for toasts and speeches. They will no doubt go over. Everyone always says, oh, well, they're, they've all been told that they have to keep it at two minutes tops. They can't go over. How many times have I coordinated a wedding where I've heard that? And then speeches end up being like 30 minutes, like total. So always budget about a half an hour for toasts because even though... You might not use all that time, we're still ahead of schedule, and then everything isn't completely thrown off, especially for the wait staff that's going to be serving courses. Um, it just makes things so much easier, and um, I definitely prefer doing it that way. And then as far as the rest of the evening goes, everything I really just do in an increment of five minutes, depending on the order in which you want to go. Five minutes for your first dance, five minutes for mother-son, um, father-daughter, and five minutes for cake cutting, five minutes for bouquet and garter, um, and that's really just sticking them wherever you see fit. Just coordinate with your photographers. Depending on what time they leave, you'll probably want to get all those events squished in beforehand, just so you can also get some pictures of people dancing. But, um... That's really it. That is just kind of wedding day timeline in a nutshell, though. There's obviously a lot more to it, and that's really why I recommend that people hire a wedding day coordinator to kind of go over this and really just work with all of your vendors, make sure that they understand the timing of the day, the flow, arrival, departure, setup times, all that good stuff. And once you have finalized your wedding day timeline, be sure to email all of your um, vendors the copy of the timeline because they're going to want to all be on the same page as well. That's something that I also do for my clients. And then, of course, for the reception, the timeline is never going to really be exact um, just because it, it really depends on how toasts go, um, how the catering staff is able to clear people's plates for dinner. It's more just a guideline and an order of events and not so much a timeline. So it is good that if the timeline does change, you as the bride and groom don't have to really think about that so much. The wedding coordinator will just kind of come up to you and be like, okay, time to cut the cake. And you're not even thinking about it. You're just like, oh, great. Okay. So like I said, makes things so much easier when you have someone there um, to kind of help you along with the timing. 
And I guess the thought that I want to leave you guys with is if you're not sure, just ask. It's never, don't ever feel like you're bothering a vendor, especially if it's about one to two months before your wedding. Um, it's always good to ask what their preferences are. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. You should not be bothering them. If they act like you're bothering them, then they're probably not a very good vendor. So that is that. If you guys have any questions at all about wedding day timelines, um, please, please, please feel free to let me know. Um, it's just, I know that it gets to be like a really stressful time time for you and I, I don't want anyone out there whether they're my client or not to feel like they're overburdened by this so um, I'm happy to share all that information with you guys and hopefully I will see you back here soon thanks so much for watching bye